Hello everyone. In this video I want to discuss two problems from Stewart Calculus. Uh, uh, problem 24 and 28. Where for problem 24, on the left hand side we're given, let's say, four A, B, C and D uh, different parametric equations and I want to f each of them to find the corresponding on the right hand side Cartesian equation. Um, there is a lot of ways how we can analyze these graphs. Let me show you a couple of uh, examples. So let's take the first one, uh, parametric equations A. In this case, the first way how we can analyze, we can see what the bounds for x variable and bounds for y variable. So in this case, we can see that our x variable changes from 2 to 1. And my y variable changes from minus 1 to 1. And then on the right hand side, we're trying to find for which corresponding Cartesian graph uh, corresponds to this bound. We can see that first graph doesn't correspond because x changes from minus 2 to 2. Then for second one also doesn't work because x, change, uh, x uh, has negative values over here. Third one is possible. Why? Because x changes from, min from 1 to 2 and y changes from minus 1 to 1. So this, this is a possible candidate. And uh, case 4 doesn't work because x also has negative values. So in all these cases, we can see that only uh, number 3 works. So 3 is my A. Okay, so we're done with the first one. Let's analyze by using the same approach. No, let's not use the same approach. Let's try something different. And let's, for example, take graph B and for graph B we're going to analyze initial point. So we can see this is my axis T and when T equals to 0 what are what is my X and Y component in this case? Corresponding to the graph my X and Y are going to be 0, 0. So I know that my graph is going to intersect uh, origin at some point. Uh, third one, we don't need to check because we already know uh, this is part A, but you can see in third one doesn't work because it doesn't intersect an origin. Number two also doesn't work because it doesn't intersect the origin. Number one is possible candidate, but number four also doesn't work, so this is going to be actual number one. So my one is going to be B. Okay, let's do the next one. C and for C we can what we can do we can analyze how many maximums and how many minimums do we have what does it mean you can see over here that X has uh, for two values of T two maximums over here and over here let's say A and B and for all interval T uh, from minus 2 to 2 for Y variable we have only one maximum C uh, let's take a look at the first graph. In my x direction, I have two maximums over here and over here. So x is a possible candidate, but in my y direction, I have three maximums over here. So graph number one doesn't work. Graph number two also doesn't work because for x I have infinitely many maximums, so we can skip it. Uh, for Number three also doesn't work because we have only one x maximum here, but corresponding to graph we should have a and b. But for number four we can see we have two maximums in x direction and only one maximum in y direction. So this is going to be, for example, my, I don't know, like a, b, and c. So from here I can conclude that number four is my c. Okay. And let's analyze the last parametric uh, equations, graphs, for number D. For number D, as we guessed, we can see it's going to be number 2. So 2 is D. But let's find the way the pattern. For example, in my X, I can see when T changes from really small variable of T up to 2, my X is going to be constant. And this is exactly what corresponds on my graph over here. When T uh, changes from like, I don't know, like 0 0.005 to 2, uh, my x is going to be constant, and you can see on this graph. 
and the same true for y when a t changes from one variable my y is pretty constant so in this case i can see it's going to be correspond to this part of my graph okay so for problem 24 i'll show you different techniques how you can recognize uh cartesian graph based on parametric one but let's move on to the problem 28 when my graphs is going to be way more extreme and very more interesting okay if you're going to take a look of each of this function you're going to be scared because like th this function are impossible to graph but i'm going to show you one of the example how we can analyze this function and how we can find the corresponding cartesian graph okay i would like to start with function f and for function f i know x equals sine t t over 4 plus t squared and y equals cosine to t uh, 4 plus t squared so let's take a look at this function at first we have no idea what this function looks like uh, like if we will try to eliminate the parameter it will not work because like it's just it's, it's this function is hard so as soon as you see some hard problem or some hard function the first thing that you should do you should find the way how you can simplify this function i can see if i will cancel out 4 plus t squared if i will just simplify it i will just pretend there is no 4 plus t squared then my function is going to be just x equals sine 2t and y equals cosine 2t and for this one i know that corresponding cartesian graph is going to be x squared plus y squared equals to one because sine square plus cosine square equals to one and then since i know that approximate shape of my graph is going to be a circle in this case i'm trying to come back to return my four plus t squared for each case and then i can see if i will take my bottom part so approximately the shape of my graph is going to be a circle but when t increases my bottom will become bigger and bigger so it means that my radius of my circle will become smaller and smaller because my radius will be dependent on t so what i will get if i will start to draw my circle i will start with a big one small one small one small one something like this and then i can take a look at my graph and what do i have over here I have that number three is exactly corresponds to the graph f because i have bigger circles smaller and smaller and smaller and you can see that graph number one two four five six that doesn't work okay so number f is check okay what is the next easy function that we can do let's take a look at problem number e for e you can see i have x t plus sine for t and y t square plus cosine three t so what can i do over here i can pretend that i don't have trigonometric functions and then my function is x equals t and y equals t squared so from here i will have that y equals x squared so approximately my function will look like parabola but what if i will return my sine and cosine it means when my t changes my parabola is going to increase the value of my parabola is going to increase decrease increase decrease and then i need to find the function that looks like approximately like parabola that one doesn't work two doesn't work three no four uh, six no five no but what about number four number four looks exactly like parabola and you can see when my t changes the value going to be increasing decreasing increasing decreasing so from here i will conclude that number four is actually my e okay so in similar way uh, so we done with e and then you can check then we can check that by using the similar approach you can find graphs d c b and a and i will recommend you start with this two with c and d and then a and b you will just need to find let's say this way you need to analyze that you have square root of t so we have square root of t you know the t bigger or equal than zero so you need also try to use initial points that we used in the first part okay guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you're not subscribed please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions bye bye